of the common things that happens with any screen door is the screens will get loose, they'll get damaged. One of the things that we hear is it'll get a tear. Happens all the time. One of the benefits of our product is the ability to change the screen out. To change the screen out, uh, all our screens are stopped in on one side. So the first step is to remove what we call the screen stop. To take that, take a putty knife to go around and remove the screen stop. The objective is to be careful when you do that so you can reuse the screen stop because it's, it's nailed in place. This screen stop is actually a square stop. So in this case, the horizontal stop would be removed first before versus the vertical. In many of our cases, it's a OG or oval O stop, which is mitered. At that point, we would recommend go with probably the longer piece because it'll be easier to get behind to pull the stop off. As you're doing this, when if you see where there's a nail, it's always good to take the, you know, and uh, go right next to the nail to, to pull it out. Before you remove the spline, we encourage to remove all the nails that are still in place. Usually we would recommend taking a vice grips and removing the nails. One thing that's important with any time, anything that is involved with anything on the exterior and there's any nails involved, we recommend using solid stainless steel nails or brads. And the reason for that is on the outside, they will rust, uh, corrode, even galvanized nails with salt water will show a residue that will show up, especially with a white screen or storm door. To remove the spline, take a flat head screwdriver, find the end to lift up the spline in one spot. Once the spline is lifted, simply pull out. These spline pieces can be reused. There should be four separate pieces, two horizontal, two vertical pieces of spline. Once the spline has all been removed, the screen can simply be pushed from the bottom, lifted up, and pulled out. When you look closely, you can see that our product has a kerf. The kerf is basically the line where the spline sets into. That kerf is all pre-machined and primed after it's been machined. And that allows when we put the screen in for the spline to set in and hold in place. Once that's done, remove the brad nails from the back of the screen stop. Screen comes in many different widths. Typically, screens come in the range of 30, 36, 40, 3 foot, 4 foot, whatnot. We recommend taking a piece of screen, making it wider than the opening, laying it out, and make sure you have the proper overlap to help pull the screen taut once done. At that point, we recommend putting a slit where the screen is going to be pushed down into the opening. We recommend starting with one horizontal spline, lining it up with the kerf, and then we actually have a spline roller, if you will, that basically is set up to allow when you push it to push the spline into the kerf. Line the spline up with the kerf, and proceed down. It is important to do one side first, so that we have a, a starting point 
to where the screen can be pulled taut in the other directions. Once one horizontal side is done, it's important to go to the other horizontal side and do the same thing. At this point, make the screen fairly taut. Once again, lining up the spline with the kerf and proceeding the same way. Once both horizontals are done, it does not matter which vertical side to go to next. Another slit should be put to allow to have the screen pulled tight on the vertical line. What the slots do is it allows the screen to be, as you're pulling it tight, to be flexible and move in the direction you need to to have it be tight. As you can see, this is a relatively simple process and something that could save you a couple hundred hours from having a service person come to, the, to your house to do on hand. Once all the sp spline's in place, the screen will be very tight and it's important to go around and make sure that the spline is still in place and even it, taking a flathead screwdriver and pushing it down and especially in the corners to give it more strength. As you can see, the spline is what is holding the screen straight. It is not the screen stop. The screen stop is more for cosmetics to get the same architectural look from side to side. It is important to look and make sure there's no parts of the spline that are sticking up anywhere throughout. Once checked, the next step is to take a razor blade and go around and cut the screen directly above where the spline is. This doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be in the range of right above it to an eighth to quarter inch above, so that way none of the screen can be visible, the excess screen can be visible once the screen stops put on. There is no particular order that has to be done. Once the excess screen has been removed, the next step will be installing the screen stop. This will be an exact reverse of how it was taken out. In this, time, in this case, the vertical screen stop pieces will be put in place first, and then the horizontal pieces. All pieces can be installed to secure a dry fit and proper fit before being nailed. Once installed, the next step is to put the pin nails in. When re reinstalling the screen stop, we recommend trying to line up the holes so that way you don't have two holes on your stop as you go around. When installing the screen stop, we recommend installing a nail approximately a half to one inch from, from the end of the stop and an additional nail approximately every 10 inches. And there you have it, a brand new screen replaced in a matter of a few minutes with a few tools.